Welcome back to Talking Through Your Kick. If you want to get involved, there are plenty of ways to do it. You can send us an email at ttyktvn.com.au. Tweet us at tvntytyk. Whatever that is. You were getting close. <laughs> I was going to say, this is about the first time you've nearly got through that without Part is paradise.com.au. That's the one. I'm hopeless at those things. But I know what to do when I've got the button on. But you left the machine too quick then. You... you, you <laughs> You're running fast sectionals and then you fell in a hole. That's exactly Getting through the T's and the Y's. Let's have a look at the biggest bets uh, for the weekend and the punters were on fire, especially in Melbourne. Take us through, Neil. Yes, Rain Affair, we know all about that. Uh, That's a bruise and a half there. Fair Hunters put five together in the West uh, and just a professional job. Wasn't overly impressive. We got the cash. 100,000 a place at $1.20. Yeah, 20 on top. And he's butted up 45,000 at the win at $1.90. standing bet. Had 45 large hops in there and there's Fair Hunter again, 45,000. Uh, at the Schnitzel 190, in. nice and early. Look at that differential. So uh, no, so one was the win, one was oh, the sorry, price. Sorry, sorry, of course. And 190 of course, and 120. The Snitzerland punters had nothing to worry about, and Cavallo Nothing not to bit. worry about. Nothing. And there's what the about double. The 300. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> there's the double. Jesus. What about that plug? He's home. He's home for everything. Snitzerland in the Managa. Um, Just missed. A couple of near misses across the weekend, uh, but obviously. Overall, punters in front or behind, you reckon, on the weekend? Uh, so marginally in front. I think it went up and down, but marginally you? in front. I'd have to say they would have come home with a wet sail in Melbourne, especially with excluding and uh, Sydney. Ooh, was a bit, I think it was a bit rough. A, yeah, I think yeah. they would have been losing in Sydney. Yep. Last a couple no. of ones in the last one. Surely it was a bookies weekend. Uh, Sydney was so a wipeout. There was a lot of early favourites go down in Melbourne and then the ones that did get up were probably a little bit too short for a lot of punters to pile into. And of course mm-hmm. we all gave it back with Souths and Geelong on Saturday night. Well, no, bring no, up again. <laughs> um, new segment for the show and uh, Lux better going to chip in uh, to uh, the winner of each uh, segment. I just told you that, didn't I? Each and every week Lux better going to put how much in their account? Oh, Angie? No. How, how much do you want? Just a Bradman? Whatever That's you like. $100 Whatever you want. into your account. <laughs> How stiff was this? And this is our first entrant. Yeah. And we're going back a couple of years, but this bloke's obviously still dying a slow death. Descarado. Descarado. It's starting to fade, up, the colour on it. That's how old it is. All up zipping. Yeah. He's had, what is he, had $20 on at 1,435 to one, and zipping's got nutted in the Cox plate. I wouldn't say nutted. Well, got beat. <laughs> How beat. stiff was this? Good well, segment, I like it. Yeah, how stiff that's was this? pretty stiff. There is another how stiff was this, which is a little close to my heart. I don't know whether 100 bucks will cheer him up, but I don't know whether no dramas. I don't know whether it was a, uh, we've got it on the graphic, but a nine-leg Olympic all-up was my how stiff with this, and I was rolled by a $1.20 uh, diver in the last leg. So, Like, like I, I always say, Russ, it's like a thousand-piece jigsaw, and you've got 999 in place, and you drop the final bit under the table, and you can't find it. <laughs> Well, that's not that I do jigsaws, <laughs> but that's as like close I, as I can get. I always relate punning to jigsaws. Have I don't you know, ever seen that last piece? Don't look at me, never, I don't play them. ever heard that in my life? <laughs> oh, mate, you know, the girls like to play them occasionally when it's raining, you know, I'm on the punt. We're we still talking about jigsaws here or what? <laughs> jigsaws, yeah. Uh, right Floyd on. Mayweather's obviously uh, doing okay. Of course, he's uh, obviously a reasonable boxer. But he's tweeted this just as a sidebar. I had 250 big boys on the Atlanta Falcons. Looks like easy money. How'd they go? They get well, they right. won, they but the up. thing is that he's taken a dollar eighty-seven there. Yeah, oh, still. There's like two hundred twenty jumps. Them at half, he's backed him a half to win at half time. Oh, well, good result. That's all right. Well, he's. But it, so you've got to put money it, for Floyd. They put, led by twenty at half time. We've got to put this all into perspective. We've got a Floyd, new man. Yeah. Floyd having two hundred and fifty exactly. big ones yeah. on well, is akin to us having twenty. He did have a hundred thousand on the Patriots. They won, and he dropped another hundred thousand on I feel uh, so Detroit. Sorry for I feel okay, so he's sorry. He's just passed the hat around. For anyway, Floyd. he's a new NFL man. <laughs> Floyd, mate. Well, good on him. Um, uh, earlier today, this was tweeted as well. Uh, while the boys were enjoying themselves on a golf course. Not a good start for the week for D. Dunn. No all-too-hard Golden Rose. And Ollie gets rekindled interest, which brings us to the noms for the Golden Rose. And all-too-hard is one of them. But interestingly, also a nomination for the Dato Tan Chin Nam at Mooney Valley. What's going on with all-too-hard? Yeah, it's an interesting uh, little move there by the, the Hawks camp. But they, it's not unusual for them to nominate for horses both in Sydney and Melbourne, given they have a stable in both states. But uh, hearing that, um, yeah, all-too-hard all too is definitely under a cloud. Um, He has been nominated for the Golden Rose, but uh, decisions to be made whether he'll definitely run on Saturday. Doesn't run on Saturday. What's Nachita get uh, pushed out at? Dollar what? No. 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 Can't be. 220, 230 maybe? No, it can't be. It's, Phillies have an awful record in the Golden Rose, yes, especially when it's running run the spring. Stripper is the only filly 
in the six runnings of the race when it's been That's held right, in, the yeah. in the spring to finish in the placings. And but not the only stripper to run down the uh, Rose Hill Garden straight at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> That's <laughs> true, <laughs> Russ. That's true. There's been a few yeah. of those over the years, just quietly. <laughs> uh, Theo Marks uh, stakes sees the resume of everybody's favourite mighty mare. Okay. Chiraco, I beg your pardon. Yeah. More and joyous. I think from a punter's perspective, if you like her for the Cox Plate, back her this week because she'd come out and win this race by four mm. and then all the bookmakers will be going, oh, how good was this run for the Cox Plate? Just so wins? This Saturday, yeah. yeah. Under the weight scale conditions, she carries 59 yep. on a 54 limit. I can't see how she gets beaten. Yep. Mm. Back to the Theo Marks and uh, a Pinwheel looks to have a mortgage on this race after winning first up in uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, he's certainly going to be hard to beat uh, Pinwheel in, in uh, the Theo Marks. 1,400 metres, group two weight for age. That's his ideal sort of conditions. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the nominations. Uh, Nick, Mooney Valley and a couple of interesting races. Uh, well, we've got the JRA Trophy. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a fantastic day's racing at Mooney Valley. A lot of horses use the Dato as a progressive race to the Cox Plate if you go back and have a look at a few of the past winners. So well, Robert Hickmott's got about six nominated in the field, race. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's go through them. Faulkner, Green Moon, Midas Touch, Seville... Uh, just and above all a part of his nominations to the race. What's the reasoning behind that? I would suggest that they've all been nominated so they can gallop on the Mooney Valley course proper during the week. Oh, that wouldn't happen at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe we should get a market done by our friends at Luxbet. How many Lloyd horses will run? Well, there's a thought. But uh, just quickly, Nick, uh, Midas <laughs> Touch, scratch last week. Uh, I'm hearing very forward. The wraps are there from the stable. Yeah, well, exactly. They've Come got on, a, hand up. No, they've got a very good team going forward, and I think Midas Touch is going to be one that they're hoping will run in the Melbourne Cup. And mm. the way their horses are all going at the moment, if they aim a horse at a race, I'm not going to say they can't win it. Yeah, OK, the team. McEwen Stakes, let's have a look at the nominations there. Agada backing up. Uh, it's not called a Guida, it's Agada. Agada. I'm going to You've go to my grave and say that it's Agada from Anthony Cummings. Bell Sprinter, Jason Warren, of course, there. Golden Archer. Uh, the brilliant Peter Moody horse, Soft you'd Sand, to... Stratcom in amongst it. Well, you'd have to think Golden Arch is going to be hard to beat, uh, given his form recently. Yeah, I mean, the way he's just jumping and leading and dictating races and Moody Valley, you'd think it'd be just absolutely ideal. So Golden mm. Archer will be hard to beat. Well, you, you've scanned over the JRA. I think there's one horse, and, geez, it's, we've, it's turned into a bit of a Williams love fest. Not yeah. only, you know, Nick... Lloyd, Serena, but we'll touch on Tanby. <laughs> Serena. <laughs> now, Tanby's a very nice Craig. stayer. Yeah, Craig as well. And yeah. could be, you know, one of the few Australian horses, a legitimate winning chance in the Melbourne Cup. I think over 2,500 metres this Saturday looks an absolute special for the punters. He's mm. found a special oh. over 2,500 metres. I'm more concerned legitimate in the Melbourne Cup. Tamby, you're shooting high there, Nick. That's all right. Tamby. Better okay. than Iron fail. Another yeah. topic that's uh, come to the fore, particularly this time of year, is betting earlier in the week. Now, we saw the opening odds of a few horses that won and ran on the weekend, obviously. Uh, opening up very good odds on the uh, Wednesday. The eyes were picked out of things, so does the early bird catch the worm as you saw on screen there? Yeah, I certainly like uh, playing in the early markets, especially if you get a chance to have a look at the nominations, say on a Monday, do look at the weights the Tuesday, and you sort of start to get a bit of a feel for the race. Come Wednesday afternoon, you, you've seen the barrier draws in the mm. morning, you're quite forward in, in your thinking. When the markets go up, I certainly think there's uh, some holes to be found. Rain Affair was $2 into a dollar. Yeah, Third. I'm a massive fan of betting early. You know, like Occasionally you, 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 you'll, you'll go out the back door a bit on the price, but geez, three out of four times or two out of three times. And one of the best examples I saw was that Lucille in Brisbane that won again yeah. for Damien Brown on the weekend. Two starts back. I think at the first price was three thirty. Absolute jog and canter, trotted in and started a dollar seventy on the day. But three thirty on the Wednesday. Two twenty on the weekend early doors, uh, paid three dollars. Okay, look, occasionally goes the other way, but I think if you're serious about it, you have to study those early prices. Do your form early, you can do it early, and particularly when they just get out in the market a bit. You can latch on to some amazing value. Settlement yeah. days on Thursday, so yeah. it's very hard to get. The only the only <laughs> thing <laughs> is the only thing is you don't want to lock yourself in too much come no, no. Wednesday afternoon. Make sure you look at the weather bureau for starters yep. because oh, they get it right. Well, well, yeah. well, you sort of got to get a bit of a feel for it anyway. You don't want to have a bet on a dry tracker and there's. 50 millimetres of rain expected yeah. Friday. Like, you, you Mate, they didn't out. forecast a 200 mile an hour headwind into the back straight. Yeah. No, yeah, well, they didn't, but, that's, but that is but, exactly. But, but you're you, right. You've you're got right. to certainly take the early markets with caution you, yeah, another, the weather. Another one from Saturday. One Luxbet punter who lives down at Frankston South yeah. had $1,000 on a double at the fixed odds. Snitzerland, yeah. into the lucky Lloyd Williams horse excluded, $3.80. Yeah. Now that's incredible overs. So Terrific, that yeah. kind of sat back and said, I like them both, and they're both overs and bet accordingly. Yeah. All up Geelong into South. No, no, just the double. Yeah. 380. 
Yeah. Enough of that. Well, Enough well, of that. But, 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 yeah, you're right. It's, um, it's good value. Still nothing beats going to the races, though, and this is what's happening. If you're headed out to Rose Hill Gardens this week, we mentioned it before, any suburb with the name Rose in the name, like uh, Rosevin or Rose Rosevin? Where, where is Rosevin? You've got to provide Rose ID. Estate. If you don't live in a Rose suburb, grab a Super Saver ticket from Ticket Tech, just 30 bucks, and it's packed with $70 worth of value. ATC members winning 2000 bucks in the members' draw, and you can win $30,000 cash, which is 5% of the Golden Rose just by being out there and being a part of the Go Racing for Real promotion. Go to theraces.com.au as Good we head stuff. to a break. This is one of yours. Is it? Solzhenitsyn might be winning something in the spring nice down horse. in Melbourne very, very shortly. He's clear. Solzhenitsyn is starting to come after him now. Bold Glance the leader, but Solzhenitsyn, oh, he's good, this horse. Look at him go. Solzhenitsyn, he strode past Bold Glance. Oh.